Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Home videos of Amber Wilde, much of what her family has left of her. Now 25 years since she vanished in Green Bay. The 19-year-old UW-Green Bay college student was pregnant when she disappeared. Police have persons of interest but have never made an arrest. Her family still holding on to hope that one day she will be found. In the story you'll only see her on Action 2 News. Brittany Schmidt speaks with Green Bay investigators about the 25-year-old active cold case believed to be a homicide. How old are you, Amber? How old? What grade do you live? These home videos of Amberlyn Wildy feeding her little brother. You wanna hold it? He can hold it all by his Hold it. Singing with her sister. I love you. I wish you in a pack. And showing off her art skills. This is a spaceship. This says, I love you. These are the memories Amber's aunt Lori Ainert says the family holds on to a determined little girl ah, one's Jake, there you go. who never missed a family get together. Very family oriented, always, always around when we had family events, kids birthday parties, Christmas, all the holidays and things like that. This is the last Christmas she spent with her family in West Bend before vanishing in Green Bay on September 23rd, 1998. She's not been seen since. Amber lived by herself in an apartment on the east side of Green Bay. She attended classes at UW-Green Bay to become a pediatrician. The morning of September 23rd, Amber was in a minor car accident and hit her head on the windshield. She talked to her dad and told him to call her the next day to make sure everything was okay but she never answered those follow-up calls. He came up here, saw that their apartment was empty, her car was gone, and then still hadn't heard from her. Amber's family called police, but were mistakenly told to wait 48 hours to file a missing persons report. When police searched her apartment, nothing seemed out of place. Nothing substantial was found at that time. But eight days later, her car mysteriously turned up abandoned here near Lambeau Field at a bar that no longer exists. In it, police found her car keys in the ashtray, her purse and cell phone in the trunk, all items investigators say someone would normally take with them before going anywhere. Police say they also noticed a few other things. The driver's seat was pushed all the way back inside the vehicle, not how five foot five Amber would have driven it. And the odometer registered more than 600 unexplained miles. The initial investigators might have already thought that something had happened to her already. Investigators collected DNA and fingerprints from the vehicle. The evidence has been sent to crime labs. The fingerprints entered into a national database. And when new technology arises, investigators resubmit evidence, hoping for a hit. I was just going over some reports today, and there's some stuff that I, I might send back to the to the lab to, to have just re-examine and stuff. Um, you know, but I guess the biggest thing would be try to get the word out as if somebody knows something. Investigators say from the beginning, they've had a person of interest, the father of Amber's unborn child. That was identified fairly quickly in the investigation. Um, however, he was not real cooperative with investigators. Detective Groff says he was defensive and made statements that police now know are lies. We have a lot of questions that, that are still unanswered, really. Um, would he be able to answer them today? I hope so, but um, that's up to him. While he remained silent, Amber herself gave police some information through her very own diary. And that has been fairly significant in terms of helping us recreate her um, you know, last days that she did write in the diary and, and what she had done and who she had talked to. Amber's aunt believes her pregnancy had something to do with her disappearance. She says Amber wanted the baby's father to be part of the child's life. And she pushed for that and I think that's, you know, that's what happened is he didn't want her to be a part of his life anymore, but she wanted him to be, you know, for the baby's sake. Did it talk about how he wasn't happy with the pregnancy or denied it? Correct. Both. That potentially could be um, a motive that uh, has always been explored. Um, but once again, 
I've learned over the years to um, not, you know, always say it's one person, but to be open-minded until you get that real good, concrete um, evidence. Evidence police have never been able to find. Over the last two decades, police have conducted digs in Shawano County they say were based on credible tips. Each time her family was there, but each time they came up empty. In 2017, the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit got involved in Wildey's case, but 25 years later, it remains unsolved. When you don't have a body, it uh, makes these um, investigations that much more difficult. And yes, I do truly believe she is deceased. And Groff truly believes investigators are just one phone call away from someone who knows something that will lead them to Amber. Beautiful woman's new hairdo on there. Look here. See how beautiful you are? Amber would be 44 years old this year, likely with a child of her own, creating home videos. Come on, Am, get up there. Help Amber. Just like the ones her family now holds on to. She um, still is missed as much as she was from day one. Uh, and we're just, yeah, hoping someday that we're going to still get answers. Hi, I love you. Everybody, goodbye. In Green Bay, Brittany Schmidt, Action 2 News. If you or anyone you know knows anything about the disappearance of Amber Wilde, you should contact the Green Bay Police Department. You can remain anonymous through Crime Stoppers.